Well, greetings once again. This is Sam in Wyoming, and today I'm going to turn a long stem goblet from this piece of mahogany. Now, I've got a piece of mahogany here. It's two inches thick, and I've got one edge planed, and I'm going to run this through my bandsaw. Now the next thing we need to do is take this over on a lathe and take this square blank to round. Okay, now I'm going to turn a piece of mahogany, and it's probably African mahogany. It's 17 inches long, so what I'm aiming for is a goblet with a stem, and the total length is going to be 16 inches. Now something else I wanted to do, now something else I wanted to do in turning this goblet is use dry wood. This piece of mahogany has probably been sitting in my wood bin for two or three years and I would say it's plenty dry. It's a little bit easier to use a piece of green wood like a limb and turn it, but I didn't want this to start warping midway through turning the stem. Well, I'm sorry about the music, but I just didn't know what to say about a guy using a spindle roughing gouge. Here I've got a skew chisel, and I'm just sort of practicing here, taking that wood down to a nice, level, smooth surface. And we will get past this and move on to something a little bit more interesting and exciting. Okay, now I have my blank rounded, and put into some long nose jaws. I've got the tail stock up right now. I'm going to define the area that's going to be the cup of my goblet. And I'm going to just take a little parting tool and mark that area. Now I'm changing my tool rest because I'm going to work on one small area at a time. I'm going to take a skew chisel and just, just very lightly define the shape of my cup. Okay, now that's pretty rough at this point, but I've kind of decided on an OG shape, which is going to look a little bit like a flower, maybe a tulip. So it'll be concave here and convex there. That's all I'm going to do. I need to remove my tailstock and hollow this out. All right, now I'm going to take the toe of my skew chisel and make a little indentation for my drill. Now I'm going to use a little drill bit and a handle. And I'm going to just uh, drill this out to the approximate depth. Okay, I've got the depth marked on the side over here. And I will certainly have to recheck that. So now I need to hollow this out. Question is what tool do I use? I'm going to start with a detail gouge and I'm going to just make a, a little bit of a draw cut coming back this way and try to get that cutting across grain. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back this up with my hand and a glove. 
If you're not comfortable using a glove around a spinning piece of machinery, be very, very careful. Okay, now I'm going to use my detail gouge and I'm going to back this up with my hand because I suspect I'll get some vibration. If you're not comfortable using a glove around a lathe, don't do it. All right, I'm getting a lot of vibration doing that. And part of the reason is I'm cutting across the grain, but I'm also putting pressure in this direction. This is sitting 16 or 17 inches off the, the chucks. Now I'm gonna to try to cut into the goblet this way and just do a push cut. I'm going directly into that end grain. So now the benefit is that I'm gonna be going a little bit more toward my headstock. Now, no sane person is going to do this without a good steady rest, but anyway, I use a bunch of different tools trying to find one that works sufficiently. Now, here I'm just using a small parting tool to mark off where my wall thickness will be on the very rim. And now I'm going to try my quarter inch bowl gouge and see how that works. Okay, now I have my camera readjusted. I'm going to profile the outside of this a little bit more. I need this shape to be fairly close to my finished profile and that way I have something to work to on the inside when I'm hollowing that. Okay, I'm very close to the shape I need. Down here, I'm gonna leave this a little bit thick until I get all that hollowed out. And I'll probably do some of that off camera. All right, now off camera, I have tried several different tools and it occurred to me that I'm hollowing. I've got to use a scraper of some sort. So I'm trying this small hollowing tool. It's a carbide tool and I think it's a Mike Joukowsky tool and I'm having some pretty good luck with this. All right, now, one thing I've done here, about a quarter of an inch down, I've got that to the thickness I want. So all I have to do is follow my outside contour and keep hollowing that, that's going to take a little bit of time. Now throughout the process of hollowing out the bowl on my long stem goblet, I do experience quite a bit of vibration, but I don't throw this off center once. And I think the most important thing that I'm going to show you is the number of tools I use on this and just kind of experiment in finding the best tool to do this. Other than that, I'm going to skip through a lot of this. Down the background to the left, you see my large dust collector. And in the foreground is my dust chute that uh, actually runs under my concrete slab. I'm using a sanding stick to do this, and I will sand through 600 grit put a little bit of finish on this, and then move on to the next section. 
Well, I've got the inside of the bowl of this goblet completed. I used a bunch of different tools. I used some of my carbide hollowing tools. This is a Mike Joukowsky tool, I'm pretty sure. In fact, this one comes in a set. It's got a little tiny carbide scraper on there. I did use a spindle gouge, a detail gouge, and that worked pretty well. And I also used just a traditional scraper. Now, when I used this, I put it at an angle like this. I didn't hold it flat. And I also removed the burr that made it less aggressive. So I've got that sanded to 400 grit on the inside. I used a little sanding stick, which is safe. And the next thing I need to do is put a little bit of finish on there. And I've also got this line marked, which is the depth of my, my bowl up here. A little uh, tulip shape, if you will. So let me find some finish and we'll move on. All right, well, let's take a look at my setup here. This is, I believe, a one-way live center. Yes, this is a one-way live center. And what I've got here, I'm going to take this off so you can see it. I'm just going to put this uh, little nail in this hole, and that secures that so I can take this off the threads. And if you have this sort of setup, and I think it, uh, it works with the Powermatic and the one way, it has threads right there, and you can go to the hardware store and get a, a, a nut. And uh, I've got a bunch of these turned to different shapes and profiles with uh, carpet underlayment on the front of that. And uh, right now this is not, this carpet underlayment is not touching the bottom. Let me just bring this up here a little closer. So I've got a little shoulder right here. And I wanted pressure on the rim of this as I go in there. I didn't want the pressure um, on the inside of the, the bowl. I didn't want that to split out, so I put a little shoulder on there. I'll bring that up right there. And I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on that. That's still running, running fairly true. So what I'm going to do now, I've got the line marked where the depth is. And I'm going to just take a parting tool and, and work that down just a little bit. And I'm going to take a detail gouge and just work this down. Now one point I'll make now and later on in the video is I'm going to reduce the size of that shoulder where my left hand is. I really have a hard time getting tools in there, so I'm going to make a large taper on my stem so I can get tools in there a little bit. So what I'm going to do right now, and I apologize for the view, you can't really see my, my tool cutting, but I'm uh, profiling the very bottom of that tulip shape. And then the next thing is I'm going to take that stem down to the final dimension. All right. Now I can certainly take my tail center away and check the depth on that. I'm, I'm plenty thick, but I, I want to do something else as I begin to Take this stem down. That's a lot of wood. And I'll show you how I approach that. Now there are a couple of turners who have turned this sort of a shape here. I think Jimmy Clues and Stuart Batty have turned this uh, tulip shape and I, I really like that. I'm going to take my skew chisel 
and just uh, take a little bit more wood off right here and the surface is not very smooth so I hope I can clean that up with my skew chisel. I'll take a little bit more down with my parting tool. Well, sanding is sanding, and I'm going to show you one grit, and we'll move on to a little finishing. And as I work through this project, I sand, oh, up to 400 or 600 grit, and then I apply a tongue oil finish on my long stem goblet. All right, now I've got a couple coats of my oil finish on there. I think that's tongue oil in that container. And here is a situation that I don't really like. I'm in a position where I can take my stem down to the final dimension, but this is really in the way. So I'm going to do something off camera and I'll show you how I'm going to approach turning this stem. Now what I've done here is I've tapered my stem area down to the place where I'm going to start my stem and establish the thickness. This allows me to get in here. I can get my hand in here and a tool. And the next step, I'm going to put a little bead right here at the base of my tulip. Now I watched several videos on making a long stem goblet. Jimmy Clues has one on YouTube. Bob Hamilton has a very nice one, and of course, Mike Walt has several videos making goblets. And Mike really sort of inspired me to do this. I'm questioning my judgment though, 16 inches, and that's really uh, how long I'm aiming for, but I'm glad to be past the bowl. I'm glad to be on the stem. So I'm going to take my point tool and establish a bead right here. And then I'm going to go into the thickness that I'm aiming for for my stem. Now I have D-Way beading tools and they are awesome. But I'm going cross grain and I think they work better in end grain. So I'm going to use my point tool. My point tool really is a thread chasing tool, but it works very well for some small detail like this, and I really, really like it for making beads. Now let me just take you through how I made this bead. I backed off my camera. Right now I've got my handle raised, and I've got the point going into the wood. If I have the point in the wood, and I have my handle lowered, I'm going to get a catch. So I start down here, I lower my handle, and right about here I lose contact with that point. And then I roll my tool over to the top of the bead, and I do the same thing over here. My point is in the wood, and then as I lower my handle, I lose contact with the point, and I profile the top of that bead. Let me do that. Okay, so I'm going to lower my handle, rotate the tool, 
and clean up the top of the bead. Now I'll do the same thing right here. And I can fine tune that with a little bit of sandpaper. And I'm going to take another detail gouge and just define the lower part of that bead right there. And right there. So now I'm ready to start my stem. Okay, now I've seen several videos on turning a goblet where the wood turner will go directly in this direction with a square tool, like a parting tool of some sort. Here's another parting tool. And that works to a point. Uh, I really would prefer to cut that some sort of a gouge. So I'm going to I'm going to experiment in here and use some different uh, tools. I've got that uh, fairly narrow and then we'll go down to the final dimension. I'm going to start with a small bowl gouge. Now I am all about finding the right tool for the right application and this quarter inch bowl gouge works really, really well as I define and kind of contour the area right there below my bowl on my goblet. Works really well. I can get in there and turn a cove. Later on, I actually go to a spindle roughing gouge and it's got a longer wing on it and I can uh, really plane off quite a bit of wood. It's almost like using the uh, edge of a skew chisel. Alright, now I like that a lot. And I, I use my small quarter inch bowl gouge in exactly this sort of situation. I like that detail. I may need to reduce the size of it just a little bit. And we'll talk about the dimension I'm aiming for for the stem. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out what uh, thickness or diameter I want the top of my stem. I have to make the bottom of the stem a little bit larger in diameter. I think that works better visually. I've got a very small skew chisel that I'm going to work back and forth. And I'm trying to stay away from parting tools. With a cutting tool, I can go towards the headstock or towards the tailstock and not across that stem, which is going to get a little bit thin. So I'm going to take this down just a little bit more. Now I've got my caliper set for seven millimeters which is nine thirty seconds of an inch. And I'm actually a little bit smaller. Now let's see what that is. That's uh, 6.77 millimeters. And I really think I can go a little bit smaller than that. I'm going to just push my luck just a little bit here. And I'm going to go back to my quarter inch bowl gouge, take off some of this mass, and work this down. Okay, let's take another measurement here. Let's see where we're at. Okay, I'm right at six millimeters. 
and I may not go down any further I'm not sure so anyway I'm gonna work my way down I'm gonna just keep working at this taking this off it'll be pretty much the same procedure all the way down now what I'm showing you right now I'm backing up my stem with my left hand and I've got my left thumb on the tool and this allows me a reference to where that tool is and this is really the procedure I use throughout the video uh, as I take that stem down to the very bottom. Alright, now I'm going to try one more tool just for the heck of it. I'm going to use a spindle gouge and this really is basically a very long finial all right, and when I'm turning a finial, I'll use a detail gouge, and this has probably got a 30 degree nose angle on it. I will use it in a scraping orientation going back towards the uh, tailstock. And I've got my hand around the wood, uh, and that'll help dampen vibration. And I'm gonna just work my way down to that thickness right there. Now I'm going to go back to my skew chisel and improve the uh, surface on that. But uh, you kind of get the idea, that works pretty good. And I was scraping, it was probably more cutting than scraping on that uh, detail gouge. Now as I progress on the stem toward the bottom, you're going to see my procedure. I really go to the spindle roughing gouge and this small skew chisel and it does a great job it's a good combination but you're also going to see the tedium involved and I'm going to cut a lot of this out because it really is just a repetition of this and I just continue down and take a little bit more wood off anyway all right I'm happy with that I'm going to turn my camera off and work my way down here you've seen the basic procedure it'll be all the same and I'll come back a little bit later and show you what I've done. Now you are watching more of the same. Let me point out something about backing up this uh, thin spindle with your hand. It's really fairly safe. I'm not sure what can go wrong with that, but notice my left thumb on uh, the flute of that spindle roughing gouge. This controls the tool, and like I said before, it also reminds me where the tool is at. I can kind of feel that. And it really adds a lot of control. But also important is backing up that thin stem with your hand. And here I go to a different skew chisel just to check that out. Now I wanted to show you a close-up of my spindle roughing gouge. This particular tool is uh, purchased from Packard Woodworks and it's a half inch spindle roughing gouge. Now I have this tool in a short handle I cast and it's just the ideal size. Now I'm going back to my skew chisel for a little fine tuning on the surface. Okay, I will bring you up to speed here. What I wanna do is maintain this diameter. This is probably the smallest diameter right in here maybe six millimeter and I want to maintain that probably down at least to halfway point because if I started getting too big the base of my stem is going to be too large in diameter so I'm going to just fine-tune this and take it down just a little bit more with a skew chisel Now, as I hold the skew chisel in this orientation, it's really a peeling cut. It's a cut, but it's not a very good cut. 
However, I like it because it levels off that surface and I can clean that up with sandpaper later on. And I think I'm very close to where I want to be. There's a little bit more turning. Well, I meant to give you a view of my chuck that I'm using. These are long nose jaws. This is a Vicmark chuck. And there's a pencil line right at the bottom here. That's 16 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this taken down to the dimension of my stem. And I'm going to move that out. I've got a little bit of wood in there. But I want to make this 16 inches. So I'm going to forge ahead and Mostly what I've been using, I've been using two tools. I've been using my spindle roughing gouge very close to the uh, diameter that I want on my stem. And then I'm going to a skew chisel. So I'm going to take this down just a little bit more. Okay, now a little bit of work with my skew chisel right in here, and I will be done with that. Then I can deal with this down here. And I'm going to turn a captured ring. I've got to do it, right? All right. Well, I'm at the very end of my goblet. This is going to be a captured ring and this is going to be the base. I've got my, my stem sanded to 400. I've extended this out just a little bit so I could part this off and maintain my 16 inch dimension. So I got a couple things to do here. This area right in here I need to take that down to that diameter and then I can work on my captured ring. Okay, I've got my captured ring all ready to go. It's still very much captured. I'm going to set it free here. I'm going to do a little bit of work on the very top of that with my skew chisel. And now I'm going to part this captured ring free with my homemade Allen wrench captured ring tool. And once I get that free, I can uh, sand this stem a little bit better. Alright, back to business. I almost forgot to do a little bit of sanding on my captured ring. So that's all ready to go. I sanded and put a, another coat of oil on my stem. So I'm not sure if I can get in here on that side. Uh, it's going to be pretty tight. So I may do most of the cutting on this side right here. Now as I work on freeing up my captured ring, I really need to get to the other side. So. Doing that, I need to profile the top of my base, and this will give me a little bit more room to get my captured ring tool in and work on that other side of the ring. There we are. One captured ring. Okay, so I'm going to clean up this right here. Work on my base a little bit. Get out of the way. Okay, just briefly, I'm going to show you what I 
am going to do here to sand the inside of my captured ring. I've got a little bit of double stick tape on there and I'm going to put some sandpaper on that. Hope it holds. This sandpaper is probably uh, fairly coarse, like 180. position my uh, my base of my goblet it went off center a bit uh, that's probably all I can do maybe maybe I can do a little bit of this just by hand sanding it anyway we'll get back to you well it's time to part this off now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen my tailstock up just a little bit but I'm not going to completely remove it. I don't want that flopping around. So I'm going to take a, a narrow parting tool right there and work on that. Now I took some care to undercut this base so it'd sit on the rim. I've got about an eighth of an inch left over and I'm just going to saw that off. There we go. Let me back the camera off and I'll give you a shot of this. Well, there you have it, my long stem goblet. Thank you very much for hanging in there with me. And this has been a fun project. A little challenging, but I got her done. And uh, I will see you next time. I'll show you some more views of this long stem goblet later. Thanks a lot for watching.